I was a platoon leader. Uh, each uh, infantry uh, company has three uh, platoons. Uh, I was one of uh, of the three platoon leaders in uh, my platoon. Uh, we were stationed uh, at a uh, rubber plantation uh, at the uh, town of Dao Tien, which was about 45 miles northwest of Saigon. So my responsibility was to take care of uh, about 30 guys in my platoon. Most all of them were 19 years old. When I got there, I was 25, because so I'd gone to college first. So I was I had, a, I had a bit of a maturity too, so I kind of helped. And uh, we would do what uh, whatever the company was ordered to do by the battalion headquarters. We would go on uh, operations and be out in the jungle and uh, the rubber plantation for oh, six to 10 days at a time. We would uh, do patrols, uh, go looking through for the enemy. Uh, most of the time we did not find them. Uh, the, uh, the experience was really a lot of boredom because uh, there wasn't much going on most of the time. However, when things were happening, it could be really, really bad. Uh, my very worst time was just 16 days after I got into the uh, into the uh, into the company. Uh, we ran into a uh, what ended up being a uh, company-sized enemy force in the jungle. Uh, I had a firefight, lasted for about half the day. Uh, we uh, we had uh, we had three guys killed, uh, eighteen wounded. Very bad day, terrible, horrible. Uh, and that was my sixteenth day. So I got to thinking there, you know, I may not be going home alive. I just, if it's like this, every couple of weeks, every month, I'm uh, I'm not going to make it. Uh, fortunately. We didn't have anything else like that. We did have other firefights, which uh, weren't, weren't as bad. In all cases, we outnumbered the enemy, uh, which was good. Uh, so that's pretty much what we did. Uh, about every 10 days, we would get a, a 24-hour break where the uh, company would go back to the base camp for 24 hours. Uh, we got to sleep. Uh, uh, I slept on a, on a bed at a building. Uh, my men slept on the cots in a big, huge tent. But we got th uh, hot meals there. Uh, we got uh, cold sodas, cold beer. Uh, we take get a shower. Uh, we had the opportunity to go to. Uh, uh, they had a radio station there, where you could go and make calls. That would uh, connect to uh, back to the states to your wife or family by uh, uh, radio operators. Uh, uh, so I did that several times. That was good. Uh, when I was back there, I would send letters to to my wife. Uh, we made uh, cassette tapes, sent them back and forth. So I had a lot of things on tape. Uh, she kept all the tapes. I had. We had about 30 of them that we sent back and forth. Uh, we Everyone got uh, about a five or six day R&R &R where they could go uh, to several places like uh, Thailand, Thailand, uh, Australia, one or two other places, and uh, uh, Hawaii. So my wife and I met in Hawaii for five or six days and uh, had a great time there. Uh, so it was, a, it was a difficult time. My The first division was one of the first withdrawn in 70. So in April of 70, well, they were withdrawn, but I still had six months left of my uh, year of commitment. So I was transferred to the 199th Light Infantry Brigade, which was uh, at Long Bend, which was a uh, Huge base, 
And uh, there I got a assignment, uh, a staff job, they call it, which is called a office job for the last six months. So uh, that increased my level of safety by about a thousand percent. Uh, pretty much uh, made it uh, extremely unlikely that I would uh, ever be uh, be wounded or worse. Uh, so I did that job. Part of the reason I got that job was my accounting degree, because one of the responsibilities of that office was to audit the 25 or so financial funds that the brigade had. So they helped me there. Uh, it was only 17 miles from Saigon, and I had business reasons to go to Saigon a number of times. So I got to see the city a little bit. Uh, we've been going by Jeep. Uh, it was very safe on the highway. A lot of people, a lot of civilians, a lot of cars, uh, quite safe. So that wasn't a problem. Uh, and uh, oh, in December of 60, uh, 70, 69, when I was with the First Division, the Bob Pope Show was in, uh, in, in Vietnam. And uh, my platoon, uh, all 30 of us got to go to the show at uh, at the Long Bend base, which was a large uh, first division base. So that was really spectacular to see Bob Pope and his show. Hey, it was really a relief and uh, really, really, really good. Uh, one of the one of the uh, speakers was Neil Armstrong. The previous uh, July, he had been on the moon, if you recall. And uh, he was there and he gave a uh, speech. Uh, they had some uh, singers uh, and uh, he did a lot of shows, a lot of funny skits. Uh, it was very good. So that was a highlight of, uh, of, uh, of, the, of the year there. We were constantly uh, out in the jungle for 10 days at a time or so. Uh, and we would uh, get, the, the company would get orders to the company commander from battalion uh, as to what to do the next day. So often we would just uh, kind of walk uh, most of the day uh, searching for the enemy. Uh, they would tell us where to go and uh, how to get there. And uh, we would do that uh, looking for uh, looking for the VC, looking for the North Vietnamese Army uh, soldiers. Like I said, we usually didn't find them. Uh, we often found a lot of a lot of their bunkers. They were have bunkers that were built uh, very well, very well built. Uh, uh, like I said, we were at the Michelin rubber plantation. So some of our assignments were in the plantation itself, which was just a huge grove of uh, rubber trees. And uh, uh, the VC would use that as getting roots to and from the local villages where they would go to recruit uh, young guys to join them and uh, to get food and uh, uh, supplies from uh, their uh, their commanding officers and commanding forces. So we, we would try to keep them uh, from getting through to do that. And we pretty much were able to do that uh, uh, for the most part while we were there for that about six months. Um, one, uh, each of each battalion would have what they call fire bases. This would be a base at very various places in the uh, area of the battalion that was uh, set up where 105 and 155 uh, millimeter howitzer uh, cannons would be set up. There would usually be uh, three or four cannons on each base, each base. And when a uh, platoon or a company got in trouble, uh, we would radio you back to a battalion. They would connect with one of the with the uh, fire base commanders, and we would tell them where we were, give them the coordinates, tell them where we needed the artillery to drop in, and uh, they would start dropping the artillery. Uh, they would give them first a firing point which was a uh, good ways out from us, but close to the enemy. And uh, when we the when the rounds went off, we would call back and say, 
uh, you know, uh, drop 50 meters or go right 25. Go right uh, 25 meters. So they were zero in on the uh, on the enemy and uh, and uh, these rounds had a bursting range of about 150 meters. So they would uh, uh, they would throw out uh, shrapnel all over the place and pretty much kill the enemy. It's a brutal, brutal thing. You don't want to see an enemy soldier has been torn apart. Worse yet, your own guys. And we saw that. I came home in uh, mid August of 70. And within a couple of weeks, I realized uh, something was different. Something was different. My brother Paul was four years younger than me. He had graduated from Virginia Tech uh, in ROTC, and he was commissioned as a uh, engineer lieutenant. He told me that once when he was visiting, uh, Sylvia and I, when I was around, he asked her, how was I doing? Uh, he said, uh, it was a long pause. And all she said was that I had changed. I had changed. She told me since then that she t I told several of her lady friends that uh, the guy that she married who went to Vietnam was not the same guy that came back. So uh, PTSD was uh, was really quite bad. It gave me a lot of depression, really deep, dark depression. I met a difficult on our marriage. Uh, she stuck with me in uh, extremely difficult times. <clears throat> and uh, 1991, I suffered a heart attack. Uh, came home after a couple of months in the hospital. I went back to work and one day when I was downtown at lunch, I passed out at a restaurant. They rushed me to the hospital and uh, I had what they call a VTAC. It's called a sudden death. Uh, it's very likely that you survive one uh, outside of a hospital. They told me it was very fortunate to have survived it. What it is, is uh, it's a, a serious problems with the heart rhythm where it beats way too fast. Instead of 70 or 60 beats per minute, it goes up to 130, 140, and it just vibrates. It, doesn't uh, pump blood and you, you pass out. Uh, I went to uh, eight months total in the hospital over a two year period. Most of that time I was waiting for a heart transplant, uh, which I got in uh, the end of May. No, the end of March, uh, 1991, 33 years ago. Uh, so that was really a lifesaver. Now, my surgeon at GW Hospital in DC was the uh, surgeon who operated on President Reagan when he was shot by Hinckley. So I figured I was in pretty good hands. <laughs> uh, I community uh, exchanged some emails with him after he retired. Um, and I wrote a book about my, uh, my heart transplant. It's called Mr. Do Heart. You can find it on Amazon, uh, Mr. Do Heart. Uh, I tell the whole story in there and 
and uh, in quite quite detailed. Um, last year, I had a book published uh, about my year in Vietnam. Uh, it's, it's titled Casualties of War. Uh, and it uh, tells the whole story, does it in detail, has pictures. It's available on Amazon. It's uh, The ebook is only $1. I'm not trying to make money on it. I just want people to uh, to read my story. And I hope people watching will do that. It only costs you a buck. And, uh, and uh, uh, I hope you do that. Uh, I had a good career in accounting. I worked for an agency of the federal government in DC. I uh, did, did well there. Retired after, uh, let's see, 20, 24 years there. And uh, been retired since 2005. One of the chapters in my book is chapter 13. The title is Waging Peace, uh, which uh, is very important. And I talk about uh, what I did after I retired and even before I retired to, to seek peace uh, in this, uh, this troubled world. I went to a number of demonstrations against the Iraq war, the 2003 Iraq war, and I, uh, I, I talk about those in the book, and uh, I did some other things uh, along that line also. My book is different from most uh, Vietnam memories, memoirs, because in chapter 24, it's called The Night, I described the PTSD, what it was like, uh, how it affected me, how it affected me uh, when I got home. Uh, I tell the whole story. It's the uh, longest chapter uh, in the book, I think, and uh, it goes through the whole thing. Uh, chapter 24 is the last chapter. It's called Out of the Night, and it uh, tells how I uh, was able to recover from PTSD and uh, depression for, for the most part. Uh, I don't think I ever really recover. But I'm in, a, in the process of continually coming out of the night. In uh, 2012, finally, I made steps to uh, go to a counselor. And uh, I had a lady counselor who uh, was outstanding. Uh, after I've been in counseling for about a month, my depression uh, reduced 90%, maybe more. Uh, and uh, it was just a great experience, and uh, I just wish I'd have done it uh, you know, 25 years earlier. Uh, so if, if you have any kind of uh, PTSD, you could have it from, uh, not just from war, but from traumatic events, uh, women from uh, trauma from a, a rape or a bad, very bad marriage, uh, being in an auto accident, uh, experiencing a murder, anything like that. Uh, you can be helped by uh, by counseling and uh, and they could help you uh, help you through it. Uh, it may cost a bit, but it's going to be worth it because the chances are are pretty good that that person will be able to help you. And if you're in that boat, uh, I urge you to pursue that. I really do.